In this presentation, we're going to look at the exponential probability distribution. And uh, we're, we're going to, well, this is a very theoretical uh, sort of exercise. What we're going to do is try and determine what the, uh, from first principles, derive the expected value. There's a couple of other things there, but this is just for, the, for this particular presentation, expected value only. I'm going to look at variance and cumulative debt distribution function later on. So, um, this is the probability density function here, the PDF, as it's called, of the exponential distribution f is a function of x and lambda and it's two cases x greater than or equal to zero the pdf is equal to lambda times e to the minus lambda x and zero in the case where x is less than zero this is interesting these cases because i'll sort of demonstrate why it's interesting later on because it's sort of uh, one of the sort of key things that sort of trouble people with this exercise if you sort of see it like that, it sort of flags the the key, um, the key one of the key sort of uh, stepping stones to the, uh, solving this problem. So there's two cases: x greater than or equal to zero, the PDF is or x is less than zero, the PDF is just zero. And uh, the cumulative distribution function we'll leave for this time around. We'll come back to it in, in another presentation. So this is the question, and I'm only going to look at part of it. Uh, the random variable x has an exponential probability distribution, uh, probability density function, PDF, given by this here. This is the same PDF, x greater than or equal to zero, lambda uh, greater than zero. Um, f of x, so it's the same one here actually, it's just actually the one, the, the main case only. The other case, the trivial case, is left out. It sort of disguises one of the sort of key points about this PDF when you sort of uh, try and compute it deliberately because this is what you this is why you sit exams and these sort of things show that the expected value of x is 1 over lambda and find the standard deviation of x I'm only going to concentrate on finding the expected value of x in this presentation we'll move on to the standard deviation of x in the next presentation because that will follow and uh, one of the results will follow from this presentation and uh, okay so and the, the 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 third the second question here sh there show that for any uh, constant greater than zero c greater than zero probably of x greater than c equals the exponential of minus lambda c that's uh, for a future presentation as well okay let's get into it so the important thing we're going to look at here is the expected value formula if the probability distribution function has a probability de if if the sorry exponential a probability uh, distribution of x uh, has a probability density function f of x then the expected value can be computed as this one here the expected value of x can be computed as this where uh, the expected value of x is x times the PDF that's the PDF there uh, the integral of that from minus infinity to infinity of x times the PDF of x and times our would uh, integrate with respect to x. Uh, a key thing actually there to sort of point out is the in, uh, the limits there, infinity to minus infinity. And I'm going to come back to that shortly, but just uh, if you recall that um, the support, so to speak, of x is only from 0 to infinity, as in you can only have values from 0 to infinity. Having something from minus infinity or any negative value just makes no sense here. There's something we're going to deal with shortly. Just as something as an aside for computing the variance of x, the expected value of x squared, let's just see actually, sorry, what I'm going to do for a second is see if I can uh, blow that up a bit. Nope, uh, better not, I'll leave it alone. The expected value of, this is just a general term actually, of where this could be to the power of 1, x to the power of 1 is the integral from minus infinity in, minus infinity to infinity of x to the power of n times the f pdf of x dx okay so that's just a, ge a general sort of expression that uh, applies to both uh, this is relevant when we start to compute the expect uh, the variance and standard deviation i'm just going to leave that there i'm just going to sort of concentrate now on my expected value but it's a sort of that was a sort of good uh, little digression there and uh, the variance of x we're going to sort of uh, leave out now as well that's how we compute the variance of x I'll talk about that later on 
Now, this is when you, important when you're uh, evaluating these definite integrals from infinity to minus infinity or zero to infinity, particularly with exponentials. The exponential, uh, the e to the power of infinity is infinity. e to the power of minus infinity can be treated as zero. e to the power of zero is equal to one. This is important because if you sort of set structure your uh, integral in such a way that it'll give you minus x or something like that when you're integrating it, or e to the minus x, it makes the problem tractable. Okay, it allows for cancellations. So when you are computing these improper integrals, uh, particularly with the exponential function there, uh, trying to get it uh, in the form of e to the minus infinity would help, or e to the minus x would help because that would cancel out much easier. It's very. Ar it seems very arbitrary why you do it one. Uh, uh, why you do it one way rather than the other? That's the reason, the rationale, because it's easier to cancel out if you sort of set things up with e to the minus x. So it's just a sort of why you might sort of see these uh, negations that sort of just came, seem to come out of nowhere. The reason is it's sort of uh, hitting that problem off in advance. Anyway, so e to the minus infinity is zero. We're going to use that later on. Now, the expected value, e to the x, equals, this is it again, in, uh, la, uh, the in integral from minus infinity to infinity of x times f of x dx, okay? Now, this is the form of the PDF I gave earlier, and there are two cases. So there's a range of values x less than zero, and the range of values x greater than equal to zero. So what I can say here is I can break my integral up into two parts. Uh, the, the lower range of values from minus infinity to, to zero, which is this one here, and then the upper part from zero to infinity, x times f of x dx, this one here. Now, in this case here, this is where x is less than zero. The, PD, uh, the PDF of that, f of x there, is equal to zero. Okay, so we have x times zero uh, in this in, in this integral on the left hand side, that means this whole term here goes to zero. Okay, because with x times zero dx, this whole side goes to zero. So what we have here is e to the x equals zero plus infinity, uh, the integral from zero to infinity of x times lambda e to the minus x, e to the minus lambda x dx. Okay, so essentially this is why we go from minus infinity to infinity uh, in one step, and all of a sudden we're going from zero to infinity there. It's the it's it's a sort of very fleshed out way of looking at it. What I'm going to do here is I am going to look at this part now and how we solve this. I'm just going to scroll down there. Is integration by parts. Okay. We're very close to the end of the problem here now. Uh, we're going to let u equal to x, du dx is equal to 1. Uh, actually, first off, what I might do here is I might bring lambda, which is a constant, I might just bring it outside. Okay. So, uh, therefore, du is equal to d of x. Now, d of v dv is equal to e to the minus lambda x dx. v is the integral of that. And that's the integral of e to the minus lambda x dx. And that is equal to e to the minus lambda x over minus lambda. Okay. So let's piece this all together. So the expected value of x is equal to lambda times x was u was equal to x e to the minus lambda x over minus lambda minus the integral of e to the minus lambda x over minus lambda dx okay first off let's tidy up all those minus signs we have a minus here and a minus here let's just get rid of that uh, let's just uh, try and cancel out all the minus signs because this they'll, they'll start to cause trouble soon. Uh, I'm going to put that minus lambda 
I'm going to tr tr turn that into minus x time over plus lambda. Okay. Now, the this is a constant in x. So what I'm going to do is actually bring out this minus lambda outside the integral. Okay. And we have lambda times this expression here, which is over plus lambda. And we have 1 over lambda here. So essentially all the lambdas cancel out. Okay, so we just get rid of all of the lambdas. Okay, so that is much tidier now. Okay, just a quick tidy up. Uh, all the plus and minus, all the minus signs, the double negatives, sort them out, and also get rid of that lambda. So it's nice, clean, crisp looking. Okay, we have to uh, integrate it for, uh, from zero to infinity as well. That's a definite integral. Okay, I'm going to come back to that bit shortly. So. Um, what we have to do here is e to the uh, minus lambda x. Again, that is equal to uh, minus x times e to the minus lambda x minus e to the minus lambda x over uh, lambda, okay, uh, from 0 to infinity. Okay. Uh, that's just the integral. We've done this integral already. Okay, uh, correctly we have plus such and such over minus lambda. I just put the minus lambda above, or just multiply it through by minus lambda. All right, now let's uh, let's evaluate the definite integrals, and we'll wrap it up. So we'll break it up into two parts for ourselves: minus x times e to the minus lambda x from zero to infinity minus this part here e to the minus lambda x over lambda that's a lambda there sorry I'll just make it a little bit clearer 0 and infinity and um, this side here when we evaluate this at infinity we we'll get 0 here okay so it's minus infinity times 0 okay e to the um lambda infinity e to the e to the minus infinity essentially uh so we just get zero there and when we evaluate this side at this one at zero we get zero times so essentially there's in two cases where one of the terms is zero so what we end up with is zero minus zero on this side okay and when we evaluate it at infinity we get zero and when we evaluate it at zero we get zero okay so that's that side's gone. So essentially, all we have to do now is look at the right-hand side. So evaluate this at minus uh, at infinity, and what you get is minus zero over lambda. And evaluate it at zero, you get minus one over lambda. Zero over lambda is just zero. So we have minus 0 minus uh, 1 over lambda, so that's just 1 over lambda. So the expected value of x is simply 1 over lambda. Okay. Just as a sort of quick remark, we're going to use that. We're going to start from here in the next exercise. Okay.